Hi, I'm Jim Jones with Emerson. In this video, I'm going to show you how to calibrate this Fisher 3582 pneumatic positioner. As you can see, it's already properly mounted onto this Fisher 657 size 40i direct acting actuator, and the beam alignment has been double checked. So now we're ready to set zero and span. The zero adjustment is done with the nozzle and the span is adjusted by moving the flapper assembly along the summing beam. We of course have our air supply plumbed to the positioner and can see on the supply gauge the regulator is set to, in this case, 20 psi. To get started, we'll move the flapper assembly to the mid-range of its travel on the direct side of the summing beam, or about to the number 6 on the scale. Understand that the direct and reverse labels on this summing beam only tell us how the positioner will react to the input signal and have nothing to do with what kind of actuator the positioner is on. Don't be confused by that. Second, we'll increase our input signal to the bottom of the input range, in this case 3 psi. Third, we'll adjust the nozzle in or out to make the needle on the output gauge sit softly on the zero pin of the output pressure gauge. Step four is to slowly increase the input pressure, but we'll watch the output pressure gauge. As soon as the output gauge needle moves, I stop the input and look at the input gauge. Ideally, it should be somewhere between three and three and a half psi. This technique makes certain that when the input is at 3, the position or output is saturated to 0 psi, and the control valve is at one end of its travel, in this case, all the way open. Now let's set the span. In step 5, I'll increase the input pressure, but again, I'm watching the output pressure gauge. What I'm looking for here is saturation on the other end of the stroke. Saturation is identified when the output pressure rapidly changes and goes all the way to supply pressure. There it is. That means the valve has hit a stop and the positioner is applying full supply to, in this case, provide maximum seat load. Our goal is to make the positioner saturate just inside the upper limit of our input signal. That is, in this case, 15 psi. So when it saturates, ideally it should be between 14.5 and 15 psi. If we increase the input pressure and the output saturates just before or after our target, which is just under 15 psi, we must move the flapper assembly to correct the span and move the saturation point. This is step six. If it saturates too soon, or before 14.5, move the flapper assembly to a smaller number. If it saturates too late, or above 15, move the flapper to a larger number. Every time you move the flapper assembly, though, you must go back and reset the zero adjustment and then check the span again. When the 3582 positioner is properly calibrated, we can be sure that when the input signal is at the limits, in this case 3 and 15 psi, we know that the valve is either wide open or in the seat with full actuator force. Once the zero and span is set correctly, don't forget to tighten up all the lock nuts. So we can calibrate the 3582 positioner in just six easy steps. Step one, move the flapper to the mid-range of its travel. Step two, apply a signal equal to the bottom of the input range. Step three, adjust the nozzle to make the needle on the output gauge sit softly on the zero pin. Step four is to increase the input to find the low saturation point. The output needle should move before the input gets to three and a half. Step five, increase the input and watch for the high saturation point. Step six, adjust the flapper assembly to adjust span and to move the upper saturation point, then re-zero and check it again. Well, visit fisher.com to learn more about the Fisher 3582 positioner or to contact your local Emerson sales representative. Thanks for watching.